Sending data from one component to another or persisting data to storage is relatively straightforward if the data you're operating on uh, are primitive data types. For example, if I had a string value that I wanted to transfer from one activity to another, then all we would need to do is take the intent that is going to launch that activity, uh, whether it's an explicit or an implicit intent, and then subsequently in that activity, I would place the data that I want to transfer as an extra by simply specifying a name value and then the information I want to transfer. And I can do this for all primitive types as well as collections of those primitive types such as arrays and array lists. I can do something similar with bundles um, where I can put strings, uh, integers, bools, doubles, and again, arrays and array lists and other collection types inside of a bundle if I wanted to do something like manage activity state. If, however, you were operating on a data that a data type that was not uh, a primitive, then you have a couple options available to you. For example, here we have a person class that has two properties, a name and age. In theory, if I wanted to transfer a person object from one activity to another, so assume I had a second activity here, then all I would need to do, well, let's first get the person object. So all I would need to do is take this person object and extract each of the fields, placing them inside of the intent. So I could take my intent and I could put the name of the person as one field and then put the age of the person in another field. And I could do this for all fields inside the object. Then when I transfer or I start the other activity, it would receive this intent and it could then extract the, the values using the same keys. Now, this is an unwielding and quite frankly, just a, a, a less than ideal approach. First, it's easy for you to see that this can become problematic if we had you know many fields. So right now I only have two, so it seems straightforward, but what if I had 10 or 20 or you know some large number? What's more, what if I wanted to send a collection of person objects? So I had a lot of, well, people that I wanted to transfer from one component, from one activity to another. Well, that starts to get more involved, right? If I still insisted on using this approach, then I guess I could create a string array to store all the names and a, a, a an integer array to store all the ages and then store them and transmit them and then loop through trying to recreate all the objects. That's just a lot of work. Uh, a far better way, the recommended way, in fact, is to instead use one of the mechanisms created for this purpose, implementing either the parcelable or the serializable interface. So how does that work? Well, essentially, the serializable and parcelable interfaces are mechanisms in Android that allow your object to be marshaled and unmarshaled automatically uh, whenever, whenever it, 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 your, your object needs to be moved transferred or stored in some way. Marshalling is a term that essentially means taking a set of data and uh, placing them in order. So it's, it's marshaled, it's placed in a line, it's, it's placed in order. 
and then unmarshalling of course is is reversing that it's taking this 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 uh, linear organization of your data and reconstructing an object from that data so you can use either parcelable or serializable and they, there are some differences which we'll get to in a moment but let's first look at uh, the implementations, and then we can talk about some of the trade-offs. So the first one we're going to look at is parcelable. So if you would like your person class or person objects to be parcelable, then you'd simply need to say that you're going to implement the parcelable interface. Now, when I do that, there is some boilerplate code for the most part that I have to add to my to my class and I say boilerplate it's it's so boilerplate that Android Studio can actually do it for you and unless you have certain special circumstances you're usually able to accept the default implementation so I, I have a context menu here with the one of the many options is add parse level implementation so when I select that I get all of this code generated based on the properties uh, of my class. If I were to say add another property, then I'd have to perhaps either manually come back here and modify these, these uh, functions, or perhaps if I've not made any changes, just delete it and have it regenerate. So let's just quickly look at some of the features uh, that were generated for us. So first and foremost, uh, we've, well, first, not necessarily foremost, uh, we have a constructor, a constructor that accepts a parcel object and then uses that parcel object to initialize the properties of the person object. Now, what is a parcel? A parcel is the marshaled representation of your object's data. Basically, you can think of it as taking all the primitive values that are inside of your that are inside of your object and putting them in a row. And because it's in a row, there is actually not even any demarcation between the elements. Instead, the demarcation is based on the type. So when you are reading from a parcel, you have to read based on the type, which will specify how much data to read and the the implication is that after that after that chunk there will be a different data element thereafter and again by doing a second read we will then read in that second chunk first it's a string then it's an integer in this scenario the order that we read the elements matters because uh how you read it has to align with how it was stored so with that, we can go to this, this function, write to parcel. So this is a function that accepts a parcel object and then places your object's data inside the parcel. So as you can see here, the generated code writes the name value first, which is of type string, and then writes the integer value. So we wrote a string, then wrote an int, therefore, here we read a string and then read an int. If we were to flip this, we, we would have problems. And then here we have a creator object. And the creator object is basically a way for Android to quickly convert your, your um, a parcel that contains the data for a person into a person. So here we see a create from parcel function that takes a parcel and then it essentially returns a person object where the parcel is passed in as the constructor argument. Essentially, it's triggering this constructor. So all of these functions, etc., are actually called automatically. They're all callbacks. We never need to touch this. So once we've specified our our uh, properties and we have our own functions that we've defined to perform whatever operations we want by adding this parcelable implementation what we have essentially done is specified a way for the data in our in our class or in our objects from that class to be marshaled and unmarshaled automatically by the system so now that this is parcelable 
when I go back to my activity and I want and I want to place this person object inside my intent, instead of having to enumerate the elements, all I need to do is say, I want to place a person inside the intent and provide the person object. And I can do this because there is a put extra function that accepts a parcelable. Additionally, there is a put extra function that will accept an array of parcelables. So if I had multiple person objects or if I had multiple people that I wanted to transfer, then it would still only be a single put extra. All I would need to do is provide an array of person objects. So that's with parcelable. The other way of doing this is with serializable. Now, if we're creating a serializable object, first, you can actually do both. And if you had reason to do that, then by all means, but it's usually just one or the other. So if I wanted to do a seria, create a serializable class or a serializable object, then all I would need to do is instead of specifying that this class is parcelable, I would instead say that it is serializable. And if I specify that it's serializable, then I'm actually done. There is no more work for me to do. Again, assuming I have a relatively straightforward or relatively simple class, uh, I don't need to actually provide any implementation. There is no boilerplate code. I just need to say that this is a serializable class. Then a person object can be placed in an intent or a bundle, similar to the way a parcelable object can be placed inside of an intent because there is a put extra function that accepts a serializable object. So serializable, as you can tell, seems a little more straightforward. Uh, so if this is the case, why don't we just use serializable all the time? Well, as, as is oftentimes the case when it comes to programming, you have trade-offs. There is no silver bullet. So the differences between serializable and parcelable really come down to two or three main, main things. The first is how is the data inside serializable uh, and parcelable marshaled? And essentially it boils down to this. A serializable implementation doesn't have any of this boilerplate code that a parcelable has because for a serializable object to be marshaled, the system uses something called introspection. Basically, your class is analyzed and the system determines how it should structure the elements of your of the class or the elements of your object based on the class definition. So it's a runtime analysis of your class to determine what the object or how the how the serializable object should be should be created. Whereas with parcelable it is not an introspective operation. Rather, it's it's pretty much manual. In a, in a sense, by writing this code, we are specifying, we the programmers are specifying how our class or how an object of our class should be marshaled. We're telling it exactly what it should do. It turns out that by giving the specific instructions rather than relying on uh, introspection, parcelables can be marshaled just a little faster than serializables. So if speed is of the essence, then parcelable objects will be quicker to marshal than serializable. Now, if you just uh, need to marshal one or two objects, it may not matter. What you have to instead consider is when you have a collection, a large collection of objects, where a small difference in the time it takes to perform the operation on one object is going to be multiplied by maybe hundreds or thousands of elements, that's when you would perhaps notice a speed difference depending on which implementation you're using. 
So that's the first thing. Parcelable, our, uh, parcelable objects can be marshaled faster than serializable objects. Uh, the, the other trade-off I get, well, the main trade-off that you, that you get there is of course that parcelable takes more code, as you can see. Again, it was, I said boilerplate and to, to some degree it is boilerplate, but uh, by the strictest definition of the word, it technically isn't since some of this stuff, since all of this is based on the properties, it will change based on the change in properties. Whereas boilerplate tends to mean a fixed fixed code that is always the same, but you get the gist, you get the idea. So this code has to be written. Whereas with serializable, you just, you just specify that you are implementing that interface and you're done. Now, there is one caveat when it comes to parcelizable, and that is, uh, or sorry, I mean <laughs> parcelable, and that is parcelable is parcelable objects can be transferred from one component to another, but parcelable objects cannot be uh, persisted to storage. They're they're meant for component to component transfer, whether that's one activity passing a, a, an object to another instance of itself or to another component, such as a a, a service or when you call start activity with some second activity and you want to pass data, parse levels are great for that. But if your intention is to store information, persist it to, to permanent storage so you can retrieve it when your app is running later, then you want to use serializable, not parcelable. So that's really one of the main differentiators uh, between parcelable and serializable. If you want to store your data, you need to use serializable. If you want to transfer, then you can use either. But if you want to transfer quickly, meaning you want to be able to, to, to marshal and unmarshal quickly, then parcelable is the implementation you'd like to use. So I hope this gave some insight into the various ways that we can create our classes in such a way that we can transfer instances of our classes, our objects from our classes, from one component to another, or to persist those objects to storage when needs be.